You gotta beat the man! This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes! Where is he? Cactus Jack! Your arms are just too short to box with God! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Heels Podcast. My name is Jacob Best of the Realm Hotter. I'm Brian, Brian Man Peacock. And we have a very special guest. We have Chris Braddock is back. Yep, your, your, uh, your local indie wrestler, Chris Braddock, over here. We want to get you a little closer to the mic. Yeah, absolutely. Usually you're, usually you're louder. Yeah, <laughs> usually. You should be fine. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, you're here. Brooks is taking the night off. Yeah, yeah, he took... I mean, I, you know, I just had a show last night. I figured, you know, it's a, another local promotion I'm working for. Figure me, come on, maybe speak about them a little bit. And then uh, the rest, I'm just here to have some fun. Talk yeah, to you boys again. You worked with the Ocala promotion, right? Yes. We got to make it out there soon. Yeah, it, it, it's fun. I mean, we, we book guys that um, wrestle everywhere, like Wolf Taylor. And, like, they're always at Fest and all these other big promotions. Um but then we also have a mixture of young guys that like are trying to get their name out there. So it's a really good starter promotion for a lot of guys. And I, they want me to be a head trainer there, but uh, I pretty much told them probably not. <laughs> um, only because Gabe Lacey, who I don't know if you know who Gabe Lacey is, but he works like ACW and he freaking he, he works everywhere and he's legit okay. as can be. And I and he's been training them, so I was like, I do not want to step on Gabe's toes because he'll literally swallow me whole. So <laughs> I figured that I just would just stand by and just would help out whenever they needed me. That's cool. Where's their school at? In Ocala? Yeah, yeah. They train at um. They train. They train at like Gabe's house. So. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, they got a they got another competing school up there. That's scary. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, that's why they chose Ocala is because there's nothing in Ocala. It's true. It is true. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about WrestleMania and all the other indie things. And oh, yeah. We currently have Ring of Honor on in the background, the Supercard of Honor, which has yeah. been fantastic so far. Now the the, the the greatest man that ever lived. Yeah. Oh, Austin yeah. Aries. A double, baby. Now he's like the belt collector. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 trying to turn himself into Ultimo Dragon. I love that. <laughs> oh man! So yeah, right now we're watching Silas Young and uh, Kenny King for the, the, pro- the promo for it. Yeah, I love Kenny King. The video is freaking cool. I remember Kenny King from way back. Way yeah, back. another dude that's been around a long time. We had the YRR and Crystal River. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I knew someone who the they pirate. would, and they're, look, they have pirates. <laughs> they actually. have more pyro than WrestleMania. Brooks would be excited. <laughs> I'm going to message Brooks tell him he's missing all the pyro. Yeah. Um, no, but the YRR, I forget who it was, but I remember I knew someone. They went up to the Crystal River Mall, and they were trying to pick up chicks to escort them to the ring from the mall. That's awesome. So I thought, that's <laughs> that a very indie funny. thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> No, Chris, they, they turned him down. She turned him down. <laughs> Chris brought funny. up before the podcast something I wanted to talk about on the podcast because we've already talked about this before, but now we got Chris's perspective. Oops. Of um, Brock busted Roman up real. Yeah, yeah, he he did it the hard way. Um, honestly, with the crowd reacting the way they were, I felt like it was um it was him trying to make something happen. He just decided to. Open Roman the hard way so that way maybe the crowd can get back into it. Just kind I'm of. I'm glad like, it wasn't just me that I, I couldn't get into it. Like it seemed like the crowd was dead. And it, it, like I said, it was it was um it was a mixture of things. It was a mixture of the seven and a half hour show, and also because they're tired of Roman being pushed. Uh, they the crowd was actually disappointed about Taker and the fact that it was just kind of a squash match. I didn't mind. But the crowd didn't seem too thrilled about it. Um, So there was a couple things. And then before that was the Nicholas Braun Strowman thing. So the crowd was exhausted. I actually, and I would have never said this before Mania, but hindsight, I wish that the the Ronda Rousey tag match would have gone last. It was really good. Uh, She impressed the hell out of me. (laughs) 
And, and listen, I'm not a hater on Rhonda. Like, that's the thing. So I hate that they pretty much pushed her to the forefront ways, like, super early. But I always knew that she'd be good at this. She was a fan. See, she's She's been a Roddy Piper fan her whole entire life. So she knows the business, how it works, and she and she has natural athletic ability. So I, I'm pretty sure she's going to be pretty damn good at this. I wasn't a Rhonda hater until all the promos. And then yeah. all, she did the, the blocking know, thing with Dana Brooke where she just stood there and blocked Dana Brooke for like, for like yes. 20 minutes. Like we were the watching build Dragon up Ball to Z. Mania. What's that? Like we were watching Dragon Ball Z. The build, yeah, the build up to Mania was fucking awful. <laughs> it made her look so bad. Yeah, it's just, the, like I said, man, she's new. She's green, man. Like, in in hindsight, she's she did a career where, like, instead of blocking it and trying to work facial expression and work a crowd, she would have just straight up just punched you in the face right after the block. So she's still learning how to, uh, like, tell a story with, you know, something that's staged as opposed to knock yeah. the bitch out like <laughs> you know so it's it, it's it's different for her but i know she's gonna be good at this i hope so i hope for a lot of people's sake and god is she sexy or what jesus christ Probably. oh god yeah <laughs> oh well <laughs> oh god you are wrong sir you are wrong in every sense of, of the word you're wrong <laughs> all Jeez. right We'll move on from that because we just went off way the fuck off topic. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. I can't help it. She's the nerd queen, dude. So, can't help I want to get your opinion on something that I feel strongly about, and I don't remember how you feel about. I don't like blood and wrestling. Unless it's really important. Mm-hmm. And it's very rare. And, like, I just feel like the blood in the, the Roman and Brock match was random. Well, yeah, that, like I said, that was a... Um... That was, a, I think, that was a more reaction to the crowd. He was trying to get the crowd more into it by giving them blood. Um, and I'll give you an instance of a time I liked it was Brock Lesnar versus John Cena at Extreme Rules when yes. John busted Brock with that fucking chain. Yeah, that was badass. Yeah, I mean, so like, the, the, yeah, there's definitely places for it, um, and it has to be worked well. Like, if if it's just a random match, I mean, blood's gonna happen, like mouth, nose, that that kind of shit happens. And I feel like um, when Brock does it, like he when, like when he did it to Randy, it's almost like, hey, I'm gonna make you bleed now. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, it's blood time. Yeah, it's almost as bad as seeing the guy bleed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, it's listen, up there. I've seen I've seen plenty of, of indie shows where they didn't even care if you see them bleed or not. So it was, trust me. I feel but, like Brock doing that is just the same thing. Yeah, I mean, and like uh, like like I said, with like the old school stuff, like fucking when it was. Dusty roads and like the cage matches and like it would get bloody, but that was because yeah. they worked it up to a to a final battle right. and all the story. That's when it's awesome. That's where it's it that has that aura. When it's something like what Brock did, or when it's something like that, like it doesn't have the aura because it doesn't have the storytelling behind it. Right. There's a major storytelling thing missing in wrestling right now. That really sucks. Yeah, and it well. It, it's because it was a lot easier back then because, you know, they, they say that we're more spotty or whatever now, which is true, but that's because fans don't really react to 80s stuff anymore. Like, they, right. you know, so, and that's the thing, too, is that in the 80s and in their time, they still thought that kayfabe was still real. Like, they still right. thought they still thought it was real, so it was a lot easier back then to um, pull off those stories because they thought it was real. But now I it's, think it'd it's be, fucking impossible. I think it'd be easier to get over the fact that it is real, you know. Because with Twitter and stuff, you can have a Twitter for your, you know, your character's Twitter, for sure. Oh, yeah. And, so. like, stuff like that. Like, I think, I don't know. I think just accepting that, oh, yeah, everyone knows what wrestling is, was is not, I don't think that was the best way to go. I don't know. But I now there's no getting, there's no going back. No. Yeah, definitely not. No, it's not. Like, but I still think that, like, a good example of a good story that hopefully they'll pick up again was The Miz and Daniel Bryan. Of course. Like, those guys fucking hated each other. I believe that they hated each other. Then Miz started using his kicks and shit just to mock Daniel. Mm-hmm. I really hope they pick that feud up again and, and Daniel Bryan beat the shit out of The Miz. <laughs> but again, what would be great is them having some back and forth matches Miz pulling some bullshit and winning. I hope Miz beats Daniel Bryan every single 
time. One of the things I'm going to recant that I've said on this podcast. Okay, you were right, that far back? Right now. <laughs> right now. I have recant. I am going to sit here and I'm going to recant. The Miz is a good worker. Okay? I agree. He's a fucking you don't, good right? worker. I just think he's, he's boring. boring. Yeah. He's no, boring. He's, he's, absolutely he's absolutely boring, absolutely but boring, he's a yeah. good worker. As a worker, he's boring? I, I mean, his matches general. still bore me. Not, his matches still bore me. He's still a little boring. But at the same time, I can now recognize that he really is he will a get really you, good worker. So he may not have the best spots and whatnot, but he will get you invested in his match. And oh, I yeah. love that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> don't, don't give two fucks his about his His promos matches. are so good. It, it depends on who he wrestles, because even his moveset, which I, I, I'm still not high on the Skull Crusher for now. Never have been, never will be. However... Um, like, when John Cena takes his, like, DDT from the knees, like, it makes it, yeah. like, like, a million bucks. Like, because he, he's one of the best that takes it. But then there's other people that kind of just go to their face, and then it kind of falls flat. So, with him, with his, like, sim, like kind of basic moveset, it kind of mm-hmm. depends on who he works. It does. You know, because you know, that's the type of stuff that makes him boring, is that when his moveset is basic and he doesn't wrestle someone that will go the extra mile on the bumping, then he becomes boring. He needs to work uh, Dolph Ziggler then. <laughs> yes. The, the best bumper and seller in wrestling. <laughs> He's, Ziggler is... But that would be why he needs to work with Daniel Bryan. No, Daniel absolutely. Bryan will put him over like a million bucks. Oh, absolutely. 100%. But hopefully, judging from SmackDown, we're going to get Daniel Bryan versus Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles. Holy oh, shit, a man is can, that a, a man match. can dream. A man can dream. And Superstar Shake-Up's coming, so... Oh, yeah, that might uh, get all fucked up. Yeah, that might get fucked up. Or you can replace one of those guys with Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe cut one of the best promos I've heard in a long time. It, yeah, it was absolute fire. I even posted on Facebook as soon as he did it. I was like, Joe, Samoa Joe just cut a powerful promo. Talk a about powerful. a powerful. A dude that is in his prime is Samoa Joe. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I cannot wait and see what WWE either. I hope... I think WWE knows that they have their next superstar on their hands with Samoa Joe. Obviously. Because they just let him tear down Roman Reigns. <laughs> and hopefully they treat him well. I feel like they've treated him pretty well. I, so I, I just still think that Vince doesn't like guys that don't have bodies. Yeah. And so, like, the Owens is the world and stuff that, like, Triple H had to, like, dig for. I mean, Triple H is digging for these guys like no you don't understand you need to put these guys over these are the guys that are gonna are the future of wrestling not roman reigns not you know the guy, it the, is roman reigns though but it's also samoa joe and all and kevin well, right Owens but and, I, honestly i think it's gonna, like i just want them to do with roman that they didn't do with cena turn him heel now turn yeah. him heel right now you do not want to do the cena thing with him cena pulled it off because he is like the make-a-wish king you can't turn the Make a Wish yeah. King heel. <laughs> also, the crowd's turning on Roman way faster than they did Cena. Exactly. So, like, just you know, I, I, do it now. Do it now, and you will have a massive heel on your hands. I mean, he may not have the nuclear heat that Tommaso Ciampa has right yeah. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because he's literally sun falling from the earth heat. I want to go ahead and say, because. I'm on the podcast, as always, but especially because Chris is on the podcast, this episode's going to be all over the fucking place. <laughs> guilty. I am guilty of that. I apologize. I want to talk about, have I, I have never seen, have you ever seen someone with that much heat <laughs> as Tommaso Ciampa? Because, tell me if I'm wrong, but the fucking wrestling crowds are always, yay, our heel is here. Yeah. Which is fine. Nobody was cheering for that guy. I think <laughs> I was the only person. Even here. Like, wow. It, like, listen, like, the, guy, the guy, like I said, the dude has literally nuclear heat. It, it when is was literally the last like, time that happened? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. If it's not real hatred, if it's actually, like, legit heel heat. Like, Miz got hatred heat. Where, like, the fans really were turning on him. Same thing with Roman. Just... Turn on him. Heat. Yeah, but that's because they're bored of him. They right. hated Tommaso. But they of his hate. Uh, yes, because of his character, and it was perfect. It was perfect. He came out, no music. He just yep. stared yeah. around. It was fucking perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. It was Everything like, hey, he's Tommaso, doing right now is perfect. You're over the edge now. You're monster heat. Okay, I don't want music. 
It's like, but you don't have to. I want music. <laughs> don't give me music. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> You know why? Because Johnny Gargano was his best fucking friend, and he wanted to make him look incredible. And, you know, and but Johnny can do that by himself. But Tommaso's like, no, nah, I got this. I'm yeah. going to put you, I, you are going to be the biggest baby face in the history of wrestling yeah. after I'm done with you. <laughs> he, I guess he is the biggest baby face in wrestling right now. Like, yeah, because Cena, Cena's kind of just part-time. and Doing what he uh, wants, yeah. Yeah, and, you know. Which is good. I'm glad Cena's like, I'm done. I'm kind of done. Yeah, I and hope Randy as well. God, I just, I just love his mic work so much. It's like it, it's almost missing from TV when his mic, his promo spot isn't on TV. It's almost painful that's not there because he's just so good. Speaking of mics, though, I hope uh, Johnny's wife's mic or headset was off during that. Oh, that was because that was just weird. Did you see that? They were talking to Candace. She was and she was just responding. sitting there. Like, kind of looking upset, but not really. Like, kind of looked like she was kind of waiting for them to say something. Like, yeah, just wait. <laughs> and then they said something again, and he cut back to her. She just sat there. So I really hope there was a, some technical difficulty or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, may, yeah, maybe that sound didn't come through her headset or something. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, shit happens. But yeah, that means... she's still like one of the best female wrestlers. Oh yeah, and listen, and Selena Vega, I can't wait till they actually finally put fucking gear on her and make her work, which apparently is supposed to be coming because her and Candice have a match, I think. Yeah, because didn't you see that uh, Liv Morgan is in trouble? What? Because she leaked tapings. She leaked tapings. Why? I don't know, but she's in huge trouble because literally the NXT, you know, the NXT, what they do like one thing where they do the tapings and it's like yeah. they have like 20 plus matches that one night for yeah. the tapings well she leaked the matches from that, that was night funny because she possibly have got from that uh, dude <laughs> and, and and she's apparently like i said apparently she's in massive trouble which is and, and selena vega versus candace lorey was on there by the way um but that doesn't make it that see that's like the people that steal shit from their jobs it's like you could have made more money continuing to work there. <laughs> it I mean, she's sense. not she's not released, but she definitely got a stern oh, talking to from the corporate. Yeah, was it video or was it like a picture of the picture lineup? of the picture of the oh, thing? Because okay. mm-hmm. I know people leak video all the time from it. Yeah. Like I see. Oh well, yeah, leaking video, but and no, the, literally the con- like the, the piece card of paper would have been out by the end of the night. Mm-hmm. She probably. I hope she doesn't get in much trouble. Yeah. I like Liv Morgan. I, I, I like I liked Liv Morgan when she was in NXT, oh. but I, I I mean, Sonya Deville. Mm. But, you know. Sonya Deville needed more time. Because I like Sonya Deville. But she just, I don't she think she was time. quite ready. Yeah, she needs more time. She still needs more time. Liv Morgan probably does, too. Uh, and They just pulled a lot of people too soon. Yeah, I mean, and then there's some that I feel like took them too long. Like, Finn, it took too long. Fucking, you think so? I do. I think Finn took too long. Um, and then, you know, he comes up and then... Oh, he's hurt do, now. Do we want to talk about Finn's entrance at WrestleMania? Sure. I, I, I'm i okay with it. Um, I thought it was me. And listen, I mean, Vince hated the demon gimmick as it is. He wants it gone, and it's gone now. I But they said before that it was going to be rare if they do it. And I think I'm okay with that. Because, like, if the demon came out for that Intercontinental Championship match, he lost. That, that, that's kind of a yeah. underwhelming thing to happen, yeah. isn't it? And, and you know, and and people are like, oh well, because it has I guess, to be the same thing as blood. It has to happen rarely. Yeah, and the thing with and I guess the the rumor is that Stephanie wants him to actually do a gay gimmick, but Triple H doesn't want him to do that. Triple H is just like, no, 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 no. Balor Club is for everyone, which yeah. you know he can stand for LGBTQ. Is a gay too. gimmick insulting to gays? I don't. He's not gay. I don't think so. I mean, now, Orlando Jordan gay gimmick? Maybe. But... <laughs> I don't remember that. Oh, dude, TNA, when he fought, when he, when Orlando Jordan came out, he, and then the next week, he went full-on freaking transvestite. I mean, I guess they're just playing characters, but... Like, I uh, but I... And then I guess Sonya Deville did the same thing, right? She had the rainbow gear on, and... Oh, I missed that. Yeah, she had like the rainbow gear on, and she did it too. 
Yeah, no, I think the Balor Club, you know, everyone is part of the Balor Club thing was cool. Yes, I, there was I agree. There a lot of people upset the demon didn't come out of Mania. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it would be great if, you know, Finn was in a feud against somebody and they hated each other. And he, like, I think that happened last time the demon came out. He was like, the demon for the universal t- title. Yeah, I was like, you asked for it. You're getting the demon. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. oh, shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was at every takeover, which it probably shouldn't have done, but maybe, I don't know. I think it's, it's, a, I think it's a waste not to use it. Yeah. Like, that was, like, he used to do it for, he used to do it a lot more often. Yeah, he did it every takeover. Well, no, I'm saying even before he was in signed. Japan. Yeah. Like, he did it. It's, he did it in, like, six-man from, tag matches and stuff. From what I saw. When he, he opened did, in New yeah, Japan. Yeah, it, it does seem like he did it a lot. Yeah, and that was part of the gimmick, why he got signed, I would imagine. I mean, yeah, he's a good wrestler, but that's all part of Finn Balor was... Part of the gimmick. The makeup. That's why I was a big fan of him. I thought it was cool. He put a lot of work into... Okay, I watched uh, a long time ago. Raven has a video. Uh, he's got a bunch of them. It was like in... I don't know if it was in the ring with Raven or what it was, but he said, you know, the more you put in, you know, the more you're going to get out of, you know, your persona. And friggin' painting yourself up like that is... That's getting you somewhere, and then you just stop doing it. I think a good argument can be made for either side of doing it all the time or very rarely doing it. But WrestleMania is going to be a time that you should do it. Yeah. But at the same time, that match was good. I thought it was better than good. Yeah. Um, It was one of my favorite matches of the night, honestly. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> Kenny King <laughs> just... Uh, did something to the outside of the ring and his feet were under the apron and the Beer City Bruiser zip-tied his feet together. <laughs> that big old guy was under the ring. Yeah. That was bizarre. I was like, is he getting pulled under the ring right now? But no, he, he's getting his feet zip-tied together. Oh, and he can't stand up, so he just lost. Oh. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny as hell. Oh, wait. So, is he going to come out now and cut a promo instead of duct tape? Zip ties? Zip ties? <laughs> that's oh, funny. Oh, man. Clever. Oh, that's a good heel thing right there. Yes. All right. That was that was good. Get, get gang stomped. <laughs> get gang stomped. This is, this is something we've been talking about on this show for a while that feels like it's happening. We're just going to start watching Ring of Honor more often. Yeah, there's no reason not to. I mean, listen. I'm oh, not, there was uh, there was a double. Oh. Is, is a double? A, uh, I guess a double's about to get that super face, that super face reaction right now. Oh God! <laughs> is anyone else happy Austin's not in WWE anymore? I was at first, oh. but now that 205 Live is getting fixed, oh. I wish he was there again. He is. It is uh, them bringing on Rockstar Spud was genius Mm -hmm. he's fantastic as a GM and the promo he cut the 205 live before Wrestlemania to hype up him uh, to hype up Cedric and Mustafa I don't know if I saw that oh dude it was emotional he was I mean it was awesome he was for a long time a reason to watch TNA he's not a great wrestler but his character's awesome. Exactly, <laughs> and I, and I love hearing him talk. Like he, yes. and he he's a great talker. And like like I said, dude, he cut a promo. <laughs> he he did a promo on two hundred five, where on like he literally he he hyped up Mustafa and Cedric, and it was so good. Like I was even hyped. I I I love two hundred five live regardless, but I was even more hyped up after that because the promo was so good. Now, do we know? Because I've seen people. On Facebook and stuff, saying that he's the reason 205 Live is being booked better. Is he booking things? No. He's just an on stream personality, right? Yes, but he. Alright, so he's not booking things. However, Triple H is now booking 205 yeah. Live, which is why it's getting better. Yeah, I remember I was giving Drake all the. Uh, or Spud, you know, all the credit for it, which I just think is funny. Which is fine with me. He can <laughs> yeah. take as much credit as he wants. Because, I mean, on screen, he's the booker. Mm hmm. So it's like, I mean, sometimes I want to be like, you guys, you guys know it's not him, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is fine, though, because, like, he, he's, right now he's the best GM personality on all three shows. Yeah. 
Especially uh, with Daniel gone. Yeah, I mean, and I don't get me wrong, I love, I love Shane O'Mac. I think I've even discussed that on this podcast before. I love Shane O'Mac. However, um, mm, he's still working through things, mic work, stuff like that. Yeah. He's still trying to get his feet under him for that, because uh, it's been a hot minute. Even if he's been back for, like, three years or whatever, it's still, you know, still a little rusty. So, um, I mean, and Paige, whose voice seems like it's always gone every time she talks. <laughs> Am I the only person that realizes this? Yeah. Like, every time she talks, her voice is, like, gone. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of bizarre. We got a lot of ads for her new movie during WrestleMania, it felt like. Yeah. Uh, Fighting with my family. Which I don't even know if I'm excited for it. I was excited about that Rock promo that they that kept great. showing. Yeah. That, that The Rock cut in the movie. That was funny. That it was, was really good. That was pretty great. <laughs> I mean, the documentary was good, but I it don't was. know about a movie. Hmm. We'll see. I mean, I will I watch it? Probably. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I'm probably not gonna rush out and watch it. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm not. I'm probably not going to the theaters. I might watch it on like Showtime. Oh, uh, here cheeseburger. Okay, how did this guy? I mean, he's good, but how the <laughs> hell did this guy get so over? This is, I believe. Cause... Honestly, honestly, I want to say it's because of Steve Carino's heel, like. Steve Carino being a heel when he freaking commentates at New Japan, he shits all over Cheeseburger. Does he? Uh-huh. Yes, he shits all over, and I think it's Gavin, it's it's worked really well for Cheeseburger. <laughs> He's just so weird. <laughs> He's gonna wear a fucking cowboy hat, I don't know. He's weird, he's extremely skinny, and then people are like, oh, you wanna make it somewhere? Yeah, you gotta build your body up. And I go, how about Cheeseburger? <laughs> cheeseburger is, <laughs> like... I, I used to say Mason was skinny. Nope. Yeah, this dude is tiny. Like, please. Like, the gear he's wearing probably weighs more than oh, he does. Rip Ace Alexander. <laughs> he doesn't wrestle no more. <sighs> Sad. Yeah, I believe we talked about that on the show as well. Uh, yeah, so is there any update for him? Yeah, dude, we have talked he's, about it on the he's, show? He's, re- he's retired, he's done. Yeah. He He will never wrestle again. I it it kills me, um. So like you know, cause he after he got hurt and whatever, then he like couldn't work. So then he went broke, and then so he's like, I just want to get hurt and then go broke again. So he he just called it quits. Huh? Being well, broke, a little bit of a mental thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's got to be a thing in wrestling. Yeah. Especially for a guy like you, you don't, not like you have WB being like, oh, you're hurt, don't worry about it, we'll take care of you. Yeah, I know. No, there's no one there. Yeah, I know, and he, I mean, he, he does construction work, so obviously when his elbows were broken, he couldn't, couldn't go to work. work. Um, so it, it was rough for him, and so he pretty much decided he can't do that again, and yeah, so it's, it's been rough. Me and Drake Xavier have been making our dues we've been wrestling other places warrior breed real pro stuff like that but man it's hard without mason i am glad to hear that you're still working like that's awesome yeah yeah man i and i'm actually like actually starting to make decent money from shows now like i'm starting to sell t-shirts now really yes i've i've i actually have a graphic designer who's doing my stuff now i pay her three dollars a shirt and then I keep the rest. Can people buy them online? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> I've been, we should talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For Absolutely, sure. but I could help you. Yeah. And I have the new design coming out for the May show, so. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to talk about that after Ab- the show. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, keep an eye out on Facebook, maybe, for that. <laughs> uh, man. Oh, wait. How's Cheeseburger hurt already? <laughs> oh, they got jumped. Oh, did they? Yeah, they got jumped. By Rhett Titus, and I'm not sure who the other guy is. Yeah. Rhett Titus. Rhett Titus is the best. <laughs> and there's bu- and there's freaking Bubba, just being Bubba. So here's something me and Brian were talking about before the show. Again, I want to get your opinion on success in wrestling. Mm-hmm. It seems it's very subjective. You have your Roman Reigns, who is obviously... Done for life. He could retire tomorrow and he's done Mm money-wise. He's fine. Mm -hmm. CM Punk, fine. We'll never need to work again. Their success 
I feel like is almost equal to somebody like a Rowdy Roddy Piper, who never won a major championship. He won like the Intercontinental Championship. Never really. He's a mega star, obviously. Jerry the King Lawler, too. Jerry Lawler, yeah. But then you also have guys. Who did I say earlier? Um, or even uh, Motor City Machine Guns. They've never been to WWE or anything. They've been on TNA and Ring of Honor. And Japan. They, yeah. Are they successful? Even though, probably, would you say a majority of wrestling fans haven't heard of them? I I would say, mm. I, I, no. I, here's, here's my thing, right? So the Guns, luckily for them, they were on TNA when TNA was hot. Yes, absolutely. Um, Which, you know, then they actually sold a lot of merch then. So then, honestly, they probably done well. Um. Now, Shelly or Saban by themselves, probably not. But as the guns, they're probably okay. I wonder what the I think Saban is. would be good. Is the quote-unquote WWE universe bigger than the indie universe? <laughs> yes. Mainly because the indie universe is ma- ma- mainly based on, like, guys like us. Yeah. You know, uh, even, the, even just like, what, 16 that. to... You know, whatever. I mean, but merch sales is everything. And, yeah. and especially for indie workers. Merch so, sales is literally everything. That's why the uh, any of the Bullet Club just can say, you know what, we're done and they'll be fine. Right. And then, like, the Young Bucks, mega successful. Absolutely. Uh, Kenny Omega. Kazarian, is he successful? I would, say, I would so. say absolutely yes. I would say so, yeah. He may never be in WWE, but I think you could write him off as a success if when he retired. Joey Ryan. Joey Ryan, absolutely. Daniels. Was in NXT for how long? Three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think James anything. Storm. He was in it for shorter. I think he was yeah. in NXT for a week. Yeah. I think anyone who gets to be a professional wrestler to make a living, I think that's yeah. success. I agree. Yeah. You still have to work. Yeah. <laughs> you, still, you have uh, a day job. Yeah, yeah. Once you don't have a day job, I think that's. I, I would consider that. It's successful. almost like once you have a day job and then you don't have that for so many years, then you're like out of success. But. Jerry Lynn, I would say most wrestling fans don't know who that guy is. Mm, yeah, totally. Is Attitude Era guys probably do because Attitude Era, everyone loved ECW. That's but, fair. That's true. Um, but like now, probably not. Like new wrestling fans that pretty much like, you know, like let's say thirteen year olds that actually know anything about indies. Yeah. They they started watching. I mean, they the, the Omegas and the you know and the Okadas and the freaking uh, guys like that. Uh, Cody, stuff like that, but uh, they won't have no idea what Jer- who Jerry Lynn is. But yep. you know what though, Jerry Lynn could go and get in- an indie booking and charge twenty five hundred dollars, and guess sure. what? He's gonna freaking get it. Yep, he's gonna get it. Yeah. So and even I mean, guys like Excalibur and PWG, their commentator, I'd say he's totally a success because he oh, owns part of that company. Yeah, exactly. And and the DVD sales that PWG sell. Yeah. Pfft. Also, he's one of the best commentators in the business. Oh God, yeah. Like, and obviously, I, I wonder if he's ever had talks with ROH or WWE or anything, because he's so good. Did you see the clip of Mauro Ronaldo losing his shit during the next? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <clears throat> he Ronaldo is the best, dude. I, I don't know if that was mentioned on the show, but I've heard people say like he needs to be on the main show. No, fuck no. We Leave tried Mauro that once already. Huh? We tried that once already. Yeah, apparently he, he doesn't get along with people at the main show or some shit. Nah, just JBL's a bully. Yeah. That's um, does JBL gone now? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's. I think he's only producing. He's not commenting. Yeah. And, and Devon Dudley. There's a lot many, of producers. There's too many stories about JBL being a piece of shit for it to not be true. Unfortunately. I mean, it, which sucks because I love, love Bradshaw so much. <laughs> he's so good and he's like the last really hard lariat on national television wrestling. Yeah. And I really liked him on the show with uh, uh, the radio guy when they would do like that sports show on the Dead Network because mm. he's so funny. Like he's legitimately really funny. But apparently he's a big piece of shit. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's it is. sad. I still remember um, when ECW f- uh, first merged with WWE and they were doing like like the the friggin' East W versus WWE invasion angle, which is one of the better times, and like and, and like JBL was at the forefront 
It yeah. was like JBL and yeah. Badass Undertaker were the two leads yeah. at that time. And like awesome. and, and Undertaker, listen, as much as I love Taker so much, when he was outside of the Dead Man gimmick, his mic work wasn't great. Okay. So then JBL pretty much took the talking side and like his promos against Kurt Angle when Angle was doing on the ECW side. Oh my god, they're so good, dude. So good. I love watching that that era, that invasion, like all, all like whatever six months, eight months that lasted. It was, it was and gold, now he's dude. Climbing mountains and shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was gold, straight gold. And Bully Ray is gonna eat cheeseburger. Yeah, he, <laughs> he turned on him. Yeah, nah. they, nah. <laughs> uh, you like that? Cheeseburger's partner got taken out with a chair, and yeah. Bully was like, "I'll be your partner," and they beat up on the two other guys, and then he choke slammed cheeseburger. For some reason, we don't know why because we have it muted because we're recording. <laughs> but he is Bully Ray must be the commissioner in Ring of Honor. He's some looks kind like of, it. of I think he, I think he's a producer. Well, he he keeps coming out and being involved in matches, so he must be like the the authority figure or some shit. Yeah, yeah. or like some special enforcer or some shit. Yeah. Even though he looks like a lumberjack, he looks like Cheeseburger's dad, <laughs> stepdad, <laughs> and he's yelling at him. He's brought home bad grades. He choke slammed him. Now he's yelling at him. That choke slam. Flashbacks to my childhood. That's what happened. He brought home a C. Damn. No, don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks. Oh man. Who is this now? Jerry Springer. <laughs> Jerry. So he doesn't look like Jerry Springer. He, he does. He does. does look like Jerry Springer. Oh well. So you got any road stories you want to share with us? Oh man, oh, God. Um. Well, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. Um. So. It's been a while. It's been a minute. Uh. And you know I've been staying local for the most part, but uh. I mean I know of a secondhand neuro story because it's Drake Xavier, and him going to. Uh, Ronin and going to wrestle at Ronin, which is a big deal. Uh, and there was a night where it, it wasn't even like story for the road. It was actually story at the show. And the show like was at this huge block party in South Florida, and there was thousands of people there. And the ring was just set right in the freaking middle. And of course, <laughs> so it's a bunch of drunkards that are on freaking. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for you? Um, it's good for. Recognition and it's yeah. good for you know. Is it promotion. good for recognition? They're all drunk. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like they'll be like, "Yo, remember that promotion we saw when we were drunk? That's this is it. their show. Let's go again." So it's not necessarily good for you. It's good yeah. for the promotion, right? And it, actually, it's funny you say that. So, in a match, um, a a fan, drunk fan, decided to run in, go in the ring, and. I don't know, for all those of you listening, I don't know if you've seen what happens when a, uh arrogant fan decides to slide into a wrestling ring. Oh, it's But you get thing. jumped by the whole entire locker room. Especially when the locker room is outside. <laughs> when the locker room is outside where every wrestler can see anything, that man got stomped out. Like, he, like got absolutely destroyed and it almost started a big brawl in this huge drunk block party in the middle of South Florida (laughs) to the point where the cops were called the show was almost cancelled but then the promoter finally talked the cop out of it was like look man it's a wrestling show they're drunk people I mean they could be brawling over there and it has nothing to do with us and you when the reason why a fan, for those of you that are just fans and you're wrestling fans, listen. The reason why wrestlers will do that is because you are not trained, you don't know, and they do not want you to hurt them. So they will do whatever it takes to get you out of that ring, and they will beat the piss out of you to make sure that doesn't happen again. Yep. And so, you know. so and the bar would have done it to Nicholas had they got a hold of him. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you brought back WrestleMania. Yep. Yeah, don't don't, don't think because you're a nine year old kid you can just stand on the apron and hold a title belt because your ass is getting. Man, dude, he was trying. He was he was all. trying to hold him up, hold it up, and he was struggling. He almost felt back holding the belt up. 
Oh, man. I, I wish Cesaro would have gave Nicholas a Swiss death. Just <laughs> throw him as high as he can. Oh, just, oh just, my Just God. come on. Just one time. One time. I mean, I know that's mean, but, like, Cesaro's safe. I know he is. Like, he's one of, he's, he's one of the better workers. He's safe. It would have just been cool to watch. Have you seen Kenny Omega beat up that nine-year-old girl in Japan? Yeah, she won. <laughs> That's right, she did. <laughs> she won. She was like, she she was like Mini Undertaker, right? Like she Kevin did chokes. She kid. finished people with choke slams. Kevin Owens' kid has a match in PWG. I can't remember who he beat. I can I can only imagine. I thought he did he pin Generico. That sounds right. <laughs> I keep thinking like Excalibur. I, I'm gonna say it's, it's maybe it was thinking. Excalibur, or a Super Dragon. Which and then my brain goes, no, Excalibur can't work anymore. <laughs> it's but it's kid. against a kid. <laughs> So, I mean... And it was a baby... Like, he was a baby. Like, he was, like, yes. one or two. Oh, say, so I've talked two. to a baby before. <laughs> I think they did it again in WWE. Oh, really? I think, it, I think Owen's son might have, like, a couple pinfall victories. <laughs> oh, yeah, awesome. I've, I've dropped to a kid before. Like, to a baby baby, too. I didn't even care. Freaking <laughs> mom had, had her on, like, one of those vest things, and the baby was facing forward. I tied up with the baby, and the baby gave me boot scrapes, and... <laughs> Oh man, yeah, heck yeah, man! I I I'll job the hell to a baby. What the hell? It was a two minute squash match. That baby that, beat my ass. It's entertaining. It's just yeah, man. That's wrestling, man. Wrestling is just goofy. Yeah, man. It's it, it really it's it's goofy and it's so funny because a lot of the OCW guys are like so low on comedy wrestling. Like they're just uh, like oh the PWG and they don't take it seriously. And I'm like guys, 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 you have to understand. That's their crowd. They know their crowd, and they know their crowd brings yeah. the people that like it. It depends on which crowd. I mean, are they going to go to Georgia and and do that? No, of course not, because Georgia is a very old school state when it comes to wrestling. Like, but like in California, where it's like a bunch of you know scene hipsters, and like they just they they're just there to see the fun, you know, like. And it's hard to be serious when you're a bunch of guys in tights. Yeah. Wrestling for a there's like belt. there's that spot it must have been in Chikara where they're like having a baseball match for baseball game. absolutely <laughs> it's like, Chikara yeah Dasher Hatfield man <laughs> Chikara is a little too much for me sometimes it is well they, they, they they're more they comic are. book driven like they yeah. you know but the fact that Chikara is like we're just gonna embrace this is also pretty awesome. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> but it's a, it's the same thing. They know their crowd. They yeah. know who comes to watch the car They're shows. Like, Fuck it. We're, if we can't be, you know, Ring of Honor or whatever, we're going to yeah. be different. Kaiju wrestling. I was just about to say, yeah. You did Kaiju that, didn't Big you? Battle. Yes, I, yes, I, I did. So I, I wrestled I at Kaiju go. Big Battle at, at the Orpheum where freaking Evolve wrestles. It was the same locker room as those guys. Uh, and... I, and Sue Young was on that show. That's where I met her. She wrestled as the you know the undead bride at Kaiju, and um, I, 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 you'd be surprised. I mean, Blanca Loco wrestled at that show. A couple of bigger names wrestled at that show as, as these as these Kaiju characters. And it was my first time ever being on iPay Per View. So here, I guess this is something I didn't know until he told me you were going to be at that show. Are there wrestling matches and then the Kaiju stuff? It's just all Kaiju stuff. And that crowd was one of the hottest crowds I've ever wrestled. So in were front you of. a kaiju guy? Or yes, you... I was. <laughs> I was. I was a kaiju. So na- cool. I was a kaiju named Unibuzu. Um, and it's literally like this. And Lindsay Dorado wore the suit before me. By the way. Yeah. Um, oh, how shit. cool is that? So, so it's literally like this big rock monster. This big red rock monster. I have like leg pieces and like uh, like certain pants. It's freaking a hundred degrees. A big rubber round suit thing. That has rock spikes in it, and then like, and that are like rubber, so you, you know, obviously, doesn't kill the people. And I have a helmet that is a full-on helmet to where it doesn't have eye holes or anything. It just has like little holes poked into it, so it's supposed to look like a solid thing. Oh my god, it was so hard to see. Um, <laughs> that explains but, why the wrestling is just like. Mah. Oh yeah, no, well, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. That's that's yeah, no. The wrestling is not great. We had a fun match. I did a, you know, I did a spot where, like, because I had that rock spikes, I freaking went for a big splash. He moved. I got stuck in the ring. <laughs> you know, like, st- stuff like that. And then I also had spikes in the back, and he gave me a senton on my back, but then he sold his back, too, because he hit my spikes. <laughs> Just fun stuff like that. They, uh, WWE want to bring, bring me back as Unibuzo again, and they want me to try to do the infrared as Unibuzo, which... <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. I mean, that... What is the that, infrared? The, the 540 Moonsault Centon. Okay. 
off the top. Um, they want me to try and do that as Unibuzo, which is so hard because that round rubber thing, I swear to you, that thing's like 30 pounds. <laughs> it, it's so heavy. And I was sitting there like, man, how am I going to actually do this? Like, I've, I've been practicing the infrared with weighted vests on, with like weighted military vests on and stuff to see if I can do it, but we'll see. <laughs> we will see. Do you know when they're coming back? Uh, I don't yet, but Tevin from WWN is supposed to contact me when that happens. Um, they just, they actually, Kaiju had a show at in New Orleans, WrestleMania weekend. I think I ruined does, it. Does, it. does everybody just have a show in New Orleans at this point? Well, wherever wherever the WrestleMania is, yeah. 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 Wherever oh, smart. Yeah. Like, that Joey Janela spring break was there, um, and, uh, uh-oh, what, what happened? Oh, no, 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 no keep going. Oh, yeah. You're good. Oh, yeah, but no, jo- yeah, the spring break to freaking, uh, what, what's it, uh, Bloodsport, uh, Matt Riddle's Bloodsport was there. They did a whole bunch of big indie promotions. Matt promises. Riddle's a badass. He is a badass. Until he got his I ass saw, beat I saw, by. I, I saw Cedric beat his ass Who one time. Who beat his ass beat by? Um, oh, Ellsworth. Fuckface guy, yeah. For a second. Do you have anything yeah. on Ellsworth? I don't like Ellsworth. I don't like Ellsworth either. Okay. He After <laughs> after I saw where Matt Riddle won the uh, Evolved title, mm-hmm. and Ellsworth came out and jumped him and kicked his ass. Which makes no sense. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah, see, like, for, for me, like, um, no, for, uh, the, the, I saw Matt Riddle get his ass kicked by Cedric, because he dropped Cedric a little bit too sharply on a German, Ooh. and Cedric got really pissed off. Oh, shit. And legit just started stiffing the fuck out of Matt Riddle. It was awesome. Because <laughs> Cedric, Cedric doesn't care, he's like, you and the main fighter, I don't give a fuck, I'm beating your ass. Damn. Cedric's the man, dude. Whatever. I, I'm the biggest Cedric Alexander fan right now. It's yeah. I was a big fan of his when he showed up at the cruiserweight championship. I wanted it. I think I changed my one of my picks to I. I kind of want this guy to win, and I've been a big fan ever since. Yeah, man. He's. I know I've seen him a bit before the cruiserweight. Like in Ring of Honor and stuff. Yeah, but the cruiserweight. Cha- uh, tournament that's really put a spotlight on him see I've, I've always been a big fan of his because where I live I, when I lived in North Carolina that's where he worked he worked okay. all around the North Carolina scene and I was in the same locker room as him all the time and he's a freaking uh, sight for sore eyes every time you see him he's such a cool dude super humble in the locker room and I've never gotten to work him but in the locker room he's you know he's, yeah. he's a really good guy and it, to see him succeed was Shit. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of those cruiserweight guys, and a lot of them are still there. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, man. And Gulak, Gulak's actually starting to turn it around. Finally. Yeah, good because he's like one of the best workers out of that tournament. Yeah, it like in. I love the whole no fly zone thing. I do too. <laughs> I just hated the whole diplomat like friggin' whatever. Yeah. The PowerPoint weird. presentation. Yeah. That I'm glad he got rid of that and the sign, the chanting, that stuff. Eh. He can he can do the no fly zone without that. He can do a no fly zone and like just freaking beat the like almost cripple their legs every time he wrestles them. Uh, I'd rather see that. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the show. Are yeah, we gonna yeah. record after this match? Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully, maybe. We'll at least we'll talk see about if, it at the next episode. We'll see if our lives change. Because Cody Rhodes and Kenny Omega is on the screen right now. <laughs> this is happening much sooner than I anticipated. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for being here. Where can they find you on social media or anything? Uh, fa- uh, Facebook. Uh, my name is Chris Gonzalez. Uh, I am actually working on a fan page now. And then my wrestling name is Chris Braddock, so watch out for that. And I and Chris, uh, the real Chris Braddock is also on Instagram now. So And awesome. and now that me and you are working, maybe you'll see my t-shirts online yes, here sir. shortly. Yeah, hopefully. Where can they find you, Brian? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brianman25 or on Instagram, Brianman1138. You can find me on Twitter at Best in the Realm, Facebook, Best in the Realm Gaming. What you got, Chris? Uh, and then uh, la- and then lastly, next OCW show is at the, yes. Ed- the Ed Krosky's Recreational Center right in the heart of Ocala. Uh, you-, you can look it up and it'll be there. It'll be in the gymnasium and it is May 19th. Yep. And so. right before that, during the day, why don't you come down to Crystal River Check out uh, the Ravenshurst group at the uh, Pirate Fest while we you're We gotta have it. another podcast soon. We gotta have another LARP podcast. 
Because yeah. so many things have happened since the last LARP podcast. What was the last LARP podcast? Was that Blood when pack. everyone was here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Things have changed. So, yeah, go listen to the Blood Pack, the Future Villains podcast, which I'll tell you where to find in just a second. Listen to that one, because we're going to do a follow-up one soon. Yeah, so you can find me on Facebook, Best of the Realm Gaming. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Best of the Realm. You can find uh, Future Villains on Instagram now. That's going to be kind of a group thing, uh, but I'm mainly running it. You can find me on YouTube at Best of the Realm, twitch.tv slash Best of the Realm. And you can find me, of course, and all of our content on futurevillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. You can find us on YouTube, Future Villains. We have a Twitch that I'm going to start trying to stream shit to, just all of our old content. Um, Facebook best, no, Facebook Future Villains and Twitter Future Villains. Thank you for listening, guys. This is episode 51. 51? WrestleMania wow. was that means, 50. That means next next week is a year. Well, we're, we've already passed our year anniversary because we've missed some. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, that was February. That was our year. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for listening, guys. You know, share this with everybody. Like, comment, all that crap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and just let us know if you liked uh, this All Over the Place podcast. We're, we're going to watch Ring of Honor now. I'm way too yeah, distracted. Yeah, wrap it up so I can hit this volume button. I'm wrapping it up. We gone.